Here's the morning after the steel erection. Three beams have been installed. And I think that is uh, excellent progress, considering this was their first night shift. When the first beam is erected, because it is so long and slender, it's considered unstable. The ends are braced, but an additional tower is provided to carry some of the dead load of the beam and also to support the top flange and brace it against the rotating. That made the first beam stable. After that, the second beam was raised and joined to the first beam by means of intermediate diaphragms. Then the pair of beams was stable and subsequent beams could be erected and joined to the previous beam with intermediate diaphragms. A lot of people use a figure of 15 minutes to set a, set a steel beam, but that's completely unrealistic under these circumstances. It's time consuming to set up the crane and then to dismantle the crane. And I think three pieces under these conditions are very good production. When all of the beams have been installed, you're ready to install the formwork. On the right side of this uh, fascia beam, the forms are metal forms, stay in place forms. They span from beam to beam and they're attached to the top flange by tack welding. On the left side of the fascia, the formwork is uh, conventional wood formwork supported by brackets. The brackets hang from the fascia beam and you can see some of the supporting hardware here which has uh, also been uh, tack welded. In the case of this hardware, the welding is done uh, away from the edge of the beam. You need to check on requirements for permissible welding uh, on these beams. The tack welding may be permissible, but more substantial welding has to be done off the edge of the flange. When I first saw this deck rebar, I was uh, taken aback. I thought it was galvanized, so I looked at it carefully where the ends had been cut. It was not galvanized. It certainly is not epoxy coated. When I inquired, I was told that it was stainless steel. I've never seen stainless steel rebar used on a construction site. Uh, this was a first. I don't know if the state had some poor experiences with the epoxy coated rebar or if they're simply exploring uh, new materials to see if uh, they will work equally well or better. Uh, I don't know the history of why they've selected stainless steel here. Uh, this is certainly a first. The face form is uh, made of wood supported on brackets you can also see this wood handrail and on top of the fascia form there's a, a screed pipe and that's supported on adjustable screws. You need to set this pipe at a higher elevation than the finished elevation to accommodate dead load deflections. You also should uh, use the finishing machine to make passes over the rebar and make sure you're really achieving the correct cover over the rebar. I have a video showing the placement of the deck concrete, but I wanted to make some general observations first. You can see the finishing machine. The uh, two uh, operators on the left are standing on the finishing machine. And of course it spans across the entire deck and runs on these uh, screeds. Behind the finishing machine there's a 
a rolling bridge which carries these pre-wetted uh, curing blankets. They are applied to the concrete immediately after it's uh, placed and screeded off. You want to cover it as soon as possible to prevent the escape of any moisture. And especially in the summer during winter conditions, it's critical to get on it uh, immediately. The requirement on this project is to keep that uh, curing blanket moist for 14 days. And you do that with perforated hose or sprinklers. The other observation, there's over a dozen people here, but most of them are bystanders. They are celebrating the day when they are finally pouring the bridge. It's been a troubled project and it must be a relief to everybody to finally see the bridge concrete being placed. Here's the finishing machine. You can see that screw which is distributing the concrete, leveling off the concrete. And behind it there's a smooth cylinder which is striking off the concrete and smoothing it. Uh, out of sight behind the cylinder, there's usually a drag which is drawn over the concrete to give it some kind of a rough texture. You don't want a completely smooth uh, finish. Uh, even if you're going to saw cut it later, you still want to roughen the initial concrete. The concrete pump is distributing the concrete the man with the rake is taking away some of the uh, excess concrete. And of course the concrete is also being vibrated. So there's very little manpower required here. Most of the people here are just uh, observing. When the finishing machine reaches the end, the machine will advance by about uh, six inches or so and then make uh, a backward pass over the concrete. And the process just uh, continues like this. Here's an overall view of the bridge. The bridge deck is complete, but there's still a great deal of work after the completion of the bridge deck. The approach roadways have to be constructed. All of the uh, ancillary activities, uh, curbs, guardrail, bridge rail, uh, all of that uh, takes a good deal of time. But in this photo, those operations are more or less complete, and they're very close to shifting the traffic. On the left side, you see the four lanes of traffic. They will be moved over the new bridge, and then you're uh, able to demolish the existing bridge and remove the uh, existing steel and complete the abutments since they were only built to the underside of the bridge. And then you do the bridge deck and all of the approach roadways. Now those activities on this project took about another year. So there's still a good deal of work to be done. Uh, there was an intervening winter which affected the progress and it required about one year from the uh, condition shown in this photo to complete the project. Here's the completed bridge. They certainly invested a good deal of time and effort and expense in considering the appearance of the bridge. The wing walls are faced in granite, which is uh, a really uh, excellent treatment. But the bridge, because it's a very long span and the girders are very, very deep, it has a kind of a heavy overbearing look to it. Uh, even the parapet, which is uh, faced in uh, granite, uh, sort of contributes to this um, heavy look. The original bridge had railing and you could look through the railing and see daylight through the railing and that had a little area uh, appearance. 
in addition, at least by eye, the bridge seems to be sagging. And that's, a, that's an unfortunate way to leave the finished bridge. I have, I have no idea how the cambers were calculated, but you want to uh, over camber, if anything, so that after the dead load deflections take, take place, you're still left with some positive camber. You really need to avoid any kind of a negative camber. And I think uh, this bridge uh, exhibits that. To go over some of the uh, time frames, the first contract took about eight months. There was more time involved because there was some initial utility work, which I did not observe. But there was at least eight months of structural work. Then the project was shut down. They anticipated about a five-year delay. They actually improved on that because there was some federal stimulus money available. And since the project was uh, shovel ready, they were able to award a second contract earlier than they imagined. The second contract had a 20 month duration. That concludes the uh, two classes on removing and replacing an overpass.